great Lent is always a time of soberness, of fasting, of spiritual attention, and above all, a time for repentance, a time to turn our hearts and our minds away from the things of this world and to turn them towards our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is always a time to do these things, and yet, in times of peace and prosperity, too often, Great Lent seems like, if you remember a few years ago, the meme, First World Problems, was a popular and common thing. And Great Lent can seem many times like a First World exercise in fasting, discipline, and too often in self-congratulation. It is not so this year. Well, maybe still a little bit. For all that we feel the privations, for all that we experience the inconvenience of canceled events, and for all that we worry about the straightening of the financial prosperity that we have been enjoying, Still, we are richly blessed to be in a well-built, well-heated place of worship, not hungry, not thirsty, not concerned, not foolish, not yet, that we will be deprived of good health care and not really worried existentially about tomorrow. But still, we are worried. We are troubled. We feel ourselves to be under threat. And indeed we are. It is for such times that the disciplines of Great Lent were established. It is for such occasions that we give ourselves over to fasting and to prayer, casting ourselves, our loved ones, our very existence on the mercy of the Lord. It is often thought that Christians when they fast and pray in times of trouble, are trying to urge God to lift the scourge that is upon us, to be merciful and delay the day of judgment to return us to our days of peace and comfort. And this is true. We ask for healing and help and deliverance. But also, but also, we offer ourselves in genuine faith, entrusting ourselves to the Lord, speaking or struggling to learn how to speak the words of the three youths in Babylon, threatened themselves with immediate and imminent death. And what did they say? They said, in the face of the threat, we understand your threat. We know you have the power to kill us, they said to the king. We know that we are in mortal danger. What you need to know, King, is that our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, 
even if he allows us to die. We still trust him. We still hold fast to him. We still refuse to deny him and go after the things of this world. This is the mind and heart that we seek in these times. We trust God to save us and we trust him even if he does not deliver us. We understand and confess and remind ourselves of the truth that whether we live or we die, we are God. And he will bring us safely through, even through death itself, into everlasting life. This is why we come here. This is why we pray psalms and prayers of anguish and trouble. We seek the deliverance of the Lord from this present trouble. And we seek still more that he deliver us from the far greater trouble of sin and death. And we trust that whether he delivers us from this present trouble or not, he will indeed deliver us from eternal death and eternal trouble and will raise us up to be united with him in joy and in peace and in glory. In Great Lent, we remember that we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven, not only citizens of our nation. And we hold fast to our Lord and our King and our Savior. I pray, therefore, that as we go from this place tonight, we may be filled not with an assurance that everything will be okay now, but with the peace of God that surpasses understanding, with trust that both hopes for deliverance and accepts whatever may come, holding fast to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ to whom be all glory, honor, and worship, together with his Father, who is without beginning, and the all-holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. God bless you all.